Hey, what's up guys? This is Mario back again with another YouTube video. And today's video, guys, I'm gonna talk about DraftKings stock, DKNG stock, and why I believe this, uh, this company can make a move. Now, there's several reasons why, uh, and I'm gonna go over uh, very specific stuff very quickly to kind of give you overall picture uh, what the fundamental analysis is. Also the technical analysis. Um, also, a lot of it has to do with March Madness. Uh, March Madness is one of the, uh, the, the events around the year where a lot of people bet a lot of money on the, on the game. Uh, they have their own brackets. They, they, they bet against different colleges for, uh, for this basketball uh, NCAA uh, game. So I'm going to go over uh, that as well as other fundamental uh, analysis stuff and technical analysis. I will also share my portfolio, guys, uh, my stock portfolio on my Cash App as well as on my Weibo account, okay? Uh, so, hey, don't forget to ask any questions down below, guys. Let me know what you guys think about DKMG, DraftKings. Uh, let me know what you guys think about March Madness. Are you guys going to be betting? Um, and there's a lot of stuff that, that I want to cover. So, uh, also, don't forget to smash that like button. Let me uh, share my screen and let's get started. Okay. So, let's share that screen. So, uh, first, what I want to kind of show you guys is uh, Dra DKMG, DraftKings um, chart. Uh, this is my using my Weeble account. As you guys can see, the last uh, year it's been trending insane, huge uh, move. It's been had it's had a really really nice trend. I think the low of around 14, all the way to 671. Definitely is already more than tripled, uh, quadruple in terms of value. And I think there's, there's definitely more opportunity to make a move. A lot of it has to do with a lot of states this year allowing gambling online. So a lot of new states have come, uh, uh, you know, allowed to, uh, you know, gamble as well as uh, there's new future states and there's a lot of uh, press releases evolving draft game. So let's, let's, this is the technical analysis. So the chart looks really, really good. There's a nice trend. The chart looks good. So the technical analysis looks good. Now let's look at some fundamental stuff. So press releases. Uh, so some of the press releases that I really like, they're recent, uh, is one like this one. On March 14th, uh, UFC and DraftKings reach a groundbreaking deal. So pretty much Draft, DraftKings becomes UFC's first official exclusive sports book and daily fantasy partner in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, DraftKings named presenting partner of the UFC Fight Clocks. So this is very, very important because... Now uh, people could bet on UFC fights on their on their on their on their DraftKings on their on their phones, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so that's one of them. Uh, also, the earnings report that was re was released on February 26. Uh, actually, let me let me show that really quickly. Um, it's really really good, and, and the most important thing is is right here. Uh, so pretty much um, they report fourth quarter revenue of 322 million. And they increased 2021 revenue guidance to 900 from from uh, to to 900 to 1 billion dollars in terms of uh, revenue for 2021, which is uh, that's pretty big. That is huge, guys. That that is freaking huge. So um, just to kind of give you some quick highlights uh, for three months ended December 20, 31st, DraftKings reported revenue of 322 million, an increase of 146 percent compared to 131 million. During the same period in 2019, so that is huge, guys. That is that is huge. I really really like that. The other thing that I really like is uh, uh the investor day. So uh, in terms of uh, actually press releases, let me kind of go back really quickly. But um, <clears throat> so um, DraftKings to host virtual investor day. So um, DraftKings uh, will host virtual investor day on Tuesday, March 9th, beginning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. The event is expected to last approximately two and a half hours. So some of the highlights of the event are right here. This is kind of like a, a PDF file that kind of goes over, you know, their 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 strategy, uh, the growth, and where they see like legalization in terms of uh, online betting or, or, or mobile betting, betting on games and sports with your phone. So uh, they do see, for example, New Jersey's growth uh, as, as one of uh, you know states that it's, that it's actually legal. Uh, so you see the online sports betting is legal in states represent 27% of the U.S. population. I gaming at 11%. So these are all the states. Uh, so it's highly recommend to kind of look at it and just to kind of go over a quick overview of what analysts thought about the investors uh, day presentation. The most important things are right here. 
So this is what what's most important. So DraftKings is raising raising its total addressable market size from 39 billion to 62 billion. That is very 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 important to to kind of uh, comprehend because if they're raising their total addressable market size from 39 to 62 billion, uh, that means that because um, so pretty much uh, right now DraftKings uh, is the head, the leader of uh, the market share in terms of. Uh, of owning um, the market share in online gambling. Right now, if you look at the market cap, DraftKings is worth around 30 billion. So if, if they're pretty much uh, addressing in the market is around 62 billion, that's, that's a lot of room to grow. That's almost double in terms of uh, uh, growth for DraftKings. Uh, so the new figure breaks down to 22 billion online in, in online sports betting, 40 billion in, in US iGaming and $5 billion in Canada. DraftKings increased their North America, uh, which is uh, total addressable market. That's TAM. It stands for total addressable, addressable market. Forecast by nearly 60%, primarily driven by iGaming and secondarily by U.S. online sports betting and adding Canada. So that is, that is huge. The addition of Canada was not factored into many of the analyst revenue projections. So all the revenue uh, analyst projections prior to, to this event did not include the possibility of Canada uh, bringing in revenue. So that's going to change a lot of things. Uh, so McDermott estimates uh, DraftKings could launch in Ontario 2022, Alberta in 2023, and the addition of Canada could add another $100 million of revenue uh, in fiscal 2023 projections. So that's huge. So look at this. Market share. DraftKings is tightening its iGaming market share range from a prior 10 to 20% to a new range of 15 to 20%. Uh, so they, they, they're pretty much saying by this is that they are uh, uh, owning that type of market share. So DraftKings Investor Day commentary further our belief that the scale will differentiate the winner in U.S. sports betting and iGaming. Uh, Alan highlights that the comments from DraftKings show that the battle for online sports betting is becoming a five to seven player race with a dominant to two to three players. DraftKings is live in 12 states, which is more than any other competitor. And this is huge. The, the, the uh, company who has the most scale is the company going to win. And DraftKings right now is the company that has the most scale and they have the majority of states where they have live and they're able to, and their customers are able to uh, make bets using their app. So right now, uh, Alan knows as an analyst that DraftKings has around 30% of the market share for online sports betting and around 19% for iGaming, including 15% or more. Uh, for iGaming in every state it operates. So that is huge. So right now, DraftKings is dominating the, the uh, industry, the sector. So I um, also want to mention why uh, Marsh Madness is important, guys. Marsh Madness, of course, starts this Sunday um, and just kind of go over, uh, you know, uh, uh, pretty much the schedule. So, of course, it starts Sunday, March 14, uh, and these are the dates. So, it's, again, we have a couple of weeks, like it's like a like – a, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. It's pretty much like, I think like the, 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 the all of month of March, pretty much until the end. So starting the 14th until the end of March, uh, actually the last final four, the last game is actually going to be April 15th. Um, so it's going to be intense, guys. March Man is intense and they, people can pretty much bet in every single game. Uh, so there's seven, there's a whole bunch of games, you know, so a lot of opportunity to make bets. Uh, so right now, of course, March Madness, uh, DraftKings have some sort of uh, deal going on uh, in terms of odds. You could bet $4 to win 256 at DraftKings Sportsbook during March Madness. So there's definitely deals to kind of entice people to kind of get into uh, betting. Um, there's uh, how to bet $4 to win 256, uh, other ways to win in wagers. So there are going to be a lot of specials and promotions to get people to gamble or to make bets during March Madness. Uh, so I just want to make a, make a, a you know, kind of go over quick history and why uh, March Madness is so important. It's because March Madness has a history of a of, 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 of lot of people making a lot of bets. There's, there's a lot of history of actually a lot of college students going to Vegas and making bets on March, management, uh, March Madness games during spring break. That is very, very common, guys. And now, especially the, because of uh, the virus and things like that, we're not able to do that. Uh, so online and using apps like DraftKings is going to be the way. Now, this article is from March 13, 2019. And just so you, so you kind of get to uh, get a feel of how big the, the market is. Uh, 40 years later, 
College basketball fans are expected to wager over $9 billion on the big dance. So in this article was, was again, um, based on March 13, 2019, knowing that uh, DraftKings controls a huge market of the online betting uh, sports uh, book, uh, a lot of this $9 billion, if not more, is going to go to DraftKings. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, mention that. Uh, now, in terms of the, the stock, really quickly, um, it is market value of around $30 billion. Um, it's, uh, there's definitely some serious volume coming in. Uh, there's, uh, there's definitely, in terms of um, um, analysts, uh, the most recent analysts from March 10th, uh, they reiterated a buy uh, target of 69 to 75. Uh, so, which is kind of already there, but I believe there's a lot of momentum and a lot of future catalysts like the March Madness numbers. Any press releases related to the March Madness numbers in terms of revenue because of March Madness, I think that's going to be a, a game changer. Now, just to kind of go over some states, not every single state is legal to to uh, to to do sports betting. Um, the green ones right here, these are the states that is legal. Uh, the one in gray are the one that's legal, but DraftKings uh, is not currently operating there. So, of course, this is an opportunity for uh, DraftKings to to kind of open go into those markets and, and go live. Um, and uh, some other states, they, didn't, they have a high possibility of making the uh, sports betting online legal are these seven states right here. So um, of course, uh, well, New York is already legal, but, um, but mobile wagering um, definitely is not legal yet. So that's something that of course uh, they're still working on and I think is gonna happen pretty, pretty soon. Connecticut is another state, Massachusetts, Ohio, Missouri, Arizona, and Texas. These are states that have a high, high probability of making online sports betting legal pretty soon that, again, will benefit um, DraftKings. So that's something that we have to keep in mind, guys, uh, in terms of future uh, elections. If, um, you know, if, uh, which, if, for example, there's already lobbyists. So, for example, casino companies such as Las Vegas Sands have already hired lobbyists ahead of the 2021 session to push for the state's first commercial casinos. And there could be more interest than ever in Austin as Texas faces budget shortfall of its own. So when states uh, face short budget shortfall, usually you'd like to do things like uh, allow legal gambling and, 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 and use that revenue, the tax revenue to, to kind of help their, their state's budget. Uh, so that's definitely a possibility in the future, guys. So that's the reason why I, I pretty much uh, like uh, these stuff. So uh, now what I'm going to do is kind of go go over again and show you guys my uh, my my Weibo account. Um, right now I have $389 on it. Um, I didn't do so hot in my position in in um, in my Riot uh, call option. Uh, you guys can see I did buy it here on the 26 for $247 and I sold for $95. So I did have a loss um, and pretty much a loss of $151. And a lot of it had to do because of the timing, uh, the cost. Uh, also, a Weeble did not allow me to do um, cover calls, um, no, excuse me, um, vertical call spreads which uh, will, I would have given me a higher, uh, more time for the, the trade to work. And also um, it would have cost me less money and I would have had a, a, a lower uh, break even price. So I'm, uh, in the future guys, I don't think I'm gonna be, uh, uh, actually just to kind of show you the, guys uh, the call option, how it looked. Uh, this is pretty much the call option that I bought uh, and the strike price is $65. So once the, the stock price goes above $65, um, definitely in the green. And right now it was so close because the stock, the option expires tomorrow. But the thing about, you know, uh, tomorrow because implied volatility just literally just deteriorates on the day of expiration expires tomorrow. I wanted to sell today. But if you look at the, uh, the stock, the, the price of a uh, riot, uh, where is right? There it is. It's, it's almost going to hit 65. So honestly, it was a timing thing. And this is the reason why I, I want to use another account to trade options because I want to have more money and more flexibility. Um, you know, and again, Weeble does not allow me to trade vertical call spreads unless I have $2,000 or more. So I'm going to have another account just to dedicate it for options. 
And I want to use this account just for uh, investing in long-term account and using margin. So I do want to use margin in this, in this account to kind of show you guys. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Let me show you my position. So these are the positions, the positions that I have currently have right now on my, on my, um, on my Weeble, I do on Tilray, my average, I do on two shares of Tilray at 24, 28 average price. Right now, uh, Tiller's making it move. I do own Riot as well. I bought at around 45, 45. I do own a Freya. I brought around 1813. I do own Trivago. I do own uh, Genworth. Now Genworth, uh, this was giving me free. It's a free stop because I, I deposited $100 and I do own GSET. So I'm actually currently only down on GSET. Now I want to quickly share my my uh, my my cash app. To you guys could sh I could show you guys my positions. So let me show you, share my cash cash app really quickly. And uh, let me go right here and go to basic. And there you go. So I'm going to share my cash app so you guys can see all my positions on my cash app and what I own. Um, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, there you go. So you guys should be able to see my account. So right now I do own Workhorse, Overstock, Tesla, NEO, Virgin Galactic, Boeing, uh, AMC, Moderna, DraftKings here. Here, this is where I bought it. So I did buy $25 uh, today. Um, so let me show you guys the details. So here, bought today around 2.42 p.m., 25 bucks. Um, and I do on gold, square, canopy grove, snap, trade desk, uh, blink, and then snap and GameStop. Now, I did take profits on GameStop. Uh, I did pretty good on it. Uh, so I sold some shares. You guys can see that. I took some profits there. Uh, so that was a pretty, pretty good uh, investment right there on, on GameStop. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, um, as, I hope you guys, uh, like this video. If you guys have any questions, don't forget to, uh, ask me down below on the YouTube comments. Uh, also don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe down below on the YouTube channel. And you guys will hear from me soon. Take care guys.